What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome back to the Nerdy Narrative. Today I am going to talk about my experience reading Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong. For those of you who are not already familiar with this author, M.L. Wong is the author of The Sword of Kaigan, which I read and covered on the channel a few years ago, but it was the winner of SPFBO 5, I believe. Was it 5? It was 2019. It has been a bit of a long wait for something new from this extraordinary author and I have to say that Blood Over Bright Haven was absolutely worth the wait. It is very different from The Sword of Kaigan. It's a dark academia novel that has some really powerful themes that are covered. A lot of themes are actually covered in this book and they're done very very well. They're introduced slowly, developed slowly throughout the story. Nothing's forced, nothing is just dumped upon you, nothing is forgotten once it starts. Started, I was really shocked by how well that was done. But before we get into all of that, let me tell you what Blood Over Bright Haven is about if you're one of those that has not heard about it yet. So in this wondrous city, we have Sayana Freynan. She's mid to late 20s. She has spent the last two decades studying very, very hard because she wants to test to become a high mage. She wants to be the first woman in the history of Tehran, the city, to pass the test to enter into the high magistry. She has been completely devoted to her studies. Part of her single-minded focus on this magic is due to her her being an orphan. Well, she does pass the test. She does enter into the high magistry as the first female high mage. She is hit full in the face with the shocking realization that this institution that was supposed to be based purely on intellect, still discriminated based on gender and your class standing in society. And it just absolutely floored her. The situation, this altercation that occurs the first day she steps foot into the high magistry, what happens as a result of that is another high mage, one who is responsible for employing the different people on that particular floor, decides to pick a janitor to be Sayana's lab assistant as a joke. Sayana didn't get as far as she has in life without having a bit of a backbone and being determined no matter the odds. The odds have always been against her because in this society, they discriminate harshly against women. Women were just expected to be a positive influence, a pleasing presence to their husbands and their family. Having ambition or goals was absolutely the most dangerous thing for a female female in the city of Tehran. So she makes lemonade out of lemons and decides that this is actually a blessing in disguise. This other mage didn't know it, but he actually did her a favor. So instead of having a lab assistant who had been trained for this job, she has a clean slate. She has Thommel, the janitor, the Quinn janitor, who knows nothing about magic. So she can teach him to be exactly what she needs. And so we have our teacher student trope that I absolutely love. While Sayana teaches Thamal about magic, he teaches her about his tribe, what his family means to him and his ancestors, which his entire tribe was wiped out when they were crossing trying to make it to the barrier. They were completely wiped out by blight, which is this supernatural evil that when it hits you, there's this bright white light and you literally see the person coming apart. Their skin just spirals off of their bones. Then the muscles, they just slowly unravel in front of your eyes. And so there's nothing left but just blood splattered on the snow. It is brutal. And that is the one thing that does not discriminate in this story. As the weeks go by and the two are working closely together on a project, they come across a secret. A secret that has been hidden since the beginning of the city of Tehran. And now these two have to decide what's important to them. The truth, their legacy, and that is the premise of this story. And it was just executed 
flawlessly. Well, now that depends on your preferences as a reader. I will say that the sections where Sayana is teaching Tommel about magic, that's how we learn about magic too. She teaches it to him and she explains it in detail and that's how we get that. You know, it can be a little info dumpy. It's not just a few lines. It is a very thorough explanation, which I loved. I get into that on magic systems because I want to know how they work. So I was furiously taking notes because it was so intricate. It was almost like writing a map. So a spell is not just a spell. There are sub spells that make the spell work. And the sub spells is an action spell. And then you have your sourcing spell. So your action spell involves the naming, the commanding of that spell. Your sourcing spell is where your mathematics gets involved. You have to find the coordinates in the other realm, which is where they pull their energy to perform their magic. And you have to find the place that has enough energy that it can pull to power your action spell and then perform whatever the end result is the mage is wanting to do. If you're just trying to move this piece of paper, that takes a little bit of energy. But let's say I want to move this candle, that's going to take a little bit more. So it was very interesting to me to learn how they went about doing that and it is in depth. I loved it, but I can absolutely understand where some folks, their eyes might glaze over with some of the details that it went into because some of these spells, depending on what the end result was, had spell webs where there's a lot of action and sourcing spells to pull enough energy from different places to do things. I just absolutely loved it. You can probably guess that the magic system is my favorite favorite part of this book. I did enjoy the character work. You cannot read M.L. Wong without getting emotionally invested in the way that this author writes their characters. That's one of the things that is similar to the Sword of Kaigan. The writing style and the amazing character work that even though Sayana to me was a very unlikable character, which I do feel that was the author's intent, very egotistical, single-minded. She was very selfish. She did not even know the names of her neighbors. She was completely wrapped up in her legacy, the mark she wanted to leave on Turan. And so that made her difficult to relate to, difficult to like, but my gosh, what M.L. Wong does with this character over this book is outstanding. And I did cry over Sayana, even though I don't like her. <laughs> that is a successfully written character arc, in my opinion. Goodreads says that fans of Lee Bardugo and Full Metal Alchemist would enjoy this novel. It's a standalone, dark Dark academia. It's got steampunk vibes. There's a little bit of alchemy. If you're a reader who loves reading fantasy books where magic has a cost, this one is one I think you would really enjoy. I mentioned one of the minor themes in this story was legacy. Sayana wanted to be the first female mage into the high magistrate. She wanted to do great work. You know, she wanted her name in the books. She wanted to write books. I became a fan of that idea of legacy when I read Nick Martell's The Mercenary Kings trilogy. This is one where the main character, Michael, is branded a traitor. His entire family is branded a traitor because his father killed the king's son and they were marked a traitor ever after. But Michael was determined that his legacy was going to restore his family's name. Loved it. And then because I'm actually in the middle of rereading The Wheel of Time, if you liked the gender injustice themes that Robert Jordan wrote about in The Wheel of Time, you are absolutely going to love Blood Over Bright Haven because M.L. Wong does it way better. Robert Jordan does a good job. It's just that he has the same characters say the same things over and over and over to illustrate the divide between men and women. And that kind of repetition is just, I'm so over it. Oh my gosh, I'm so over it. Other things you might want to be aware of before you pick this one up, content warnings, sexual assault, there is gore. When I was talking about the blight, how it kills people, that gets in pretty deep and it's very traumatic in places. 
So just keep that in mind when you pick this one up. I definitely recommend it. It was just another exquisite piece of work from ML Wong. I cannot wait to get my hands on the next one. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Let me know in those comments down below what you think. Does this sound like one you might be interested in? Is it already on your TBR? I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this review and you want to catch more like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.